today we're going to be looking at a baby blanket. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel Kesalistic and hi to my new subscribers. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy my channel. Um, so today we're going to be looking at a baby blanket. Now this baby blanket is a little bit different in that Unfortunately, this pattern isn't on Ravelry and I've tried to locate it online and I haven't been able to. Um, so this is going to purely be to give you some inspirations of something that you could create um, by yourself. Um, it is a fairly straightforward pattern. Um, so I'm hoping that this will give you some inspiration and some ideas of something maybe just a little bit different for a baby blanket. So the pattern I've used is called the beautiful baby blanket and um, this is from a magazine um, that's um, in the UK um, it's called yours magazine it's um, aimed at the older generation demographic here in the UK I I'm not sure if um, you have it anywhere else in the world um, now mum pulled this out of the magazine for me because my mum does buy it from time to time and um, unfortunately I don't know which edition um, it was which issue it was so unfortunately I can't tell you that um, but I'll go through it as, as much as I'm able without uh, breaching copyright, of course. Um, so it, they class it as a number two out of five stars, and it's based for those with some experience, it says. Um, but yeah, there's the beautiful baby blanket. That's what it's called. Um, they've done theirs in blue. Uh, so the materials that they've called for is four 50 gram balls of Sirdar Snuggly 4-ply, uh, which is pastel blue and for a 3.5 millimeter hook um, to do this pattern you will need to know how to chain how to do um, double crochets um, let me just see Uh, yeah, double crochets in U UK terms, so single crochets in American terms. Um, how to treble five together, that's UK terms, or double crochet five together in US terms. Um, and uh, how to do five double crochets into one stitch, or five treble crochets into one stitch, depending on whether you're talking about US or UK terminology. Um, slip stitch. And I think that was pretty much it. And basically how to do what they call a V-stitch, which is basically a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, that's US terms, or treble, chain one, treble in UK terms. So it's a fairly straightforward um, pattern. Um, so the yarn that I've used um, is one that I haven't actually shown on camera yet. This is some of the yarn that uh, Jan Carruthers has sent me. If you don't know who Jan is, I will link her uh, channel down in the description box. Um, so do go along and subscribe to her. Um, she's basically the matrix of our crochet vloggers um, community here. Um, and she's a wonderful lady and um, I'm very privileged to call her a friend. So I just want to say thank you, Jan, for the yarn. Um, I will be doing the yarn haul very, very soon. Um, but I just, I liked this yarn. I got inspired. I know what it's like when you get inspired. I couldn't wait. So... Um, this is yarn you haven't yet seen, so I won't be including this in the yarn haul just because I'm showing it now and I don't want to repeat things. So the yarn I've used, um, Jan actually sent me four balls of this, so I will still have two balls left. The pattern is used just under 200 grams, which are 200 gram balls. So these are 100 gram balls. Um, they are 85% acrylic and 15% tensile. T-E-N-C-E-L, never ever heard of that one, so that's a new one on me. Um, I'm just looking to see if there's yards. Yeah, there's, um, they're 390 metres per 100 gram ball. So the yarn is called Wendy Bambino Full Ply Knitting for Babies. And the colour is shade 14... Seven four, which is right there. And there we go. And as you can see, while it's zoomed in, um, it's basically a white yarn, but it's got these little flecks of yellow, and I 
you can see them just very pale green it's predominantly sort of white but you just get the flecks every now and then I thought it was really really pretty um, so I've used two balls of this and this is basically what I've got left so very very small amount you can see where I've written on so I know who <laughs> Who sent me the yarn? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just a teeny bit. That's all I had left out of two balls, 200 gram balls. Um, so it's a good stash buster if you've got a couple of balls that you want to use up. So, I just want to make sure I get it the right way up. So this is the blanket. Now I did have to block this quite a lot um, just because trying to you don't get many I'll explain why in a minute but uh, the white the, some of the um, edges went a little bit wavy and so I just blocked it and it has straightened it all out um, as you can see it's quite quite a big blanket it was around about 91 centimeters long by 61 wide I think it was um, but it's a nice size blanket now this will be going off to um, no great surprise for those of you that know me, it will be going off to Woolly Hugs. Um, I'm going to be posting it later today. All the stuff you've seen over the last few months will be posted today. It's going to cost me a small fortune and I'm kind of dreading that bit. Of that. But, um, you know, it's the only way I can get it to them, unfortunately. So, And they're closing for the summer soon, so I've got no choice but to send it now. So this will be going off later today. Um, so... Um, those of you that haven't heard of Woolly Hugs, um, it's a charity based here in the UK. They have uh, multiple projects. I will link their Facebook group and the uh, website down below in the description box so you can go check it out. Um, this particular blanket will be um, what they call an angel hug um, and this will be to wrap a, a child that has become an angel basically. That's uh, passed away. Um, so it's something that I feel very strongly about that, you know, you're still a parent even if you've lost a child. Um, my parents uh, lost my brother at a very young age, so um, it's very something that is very um, dear to my heart, shall we say. So that's what this blanket will be used for. Um, so the basic plat pattern, you start off um, with a chain. Um, and then you basically um, trying to work this without giving too much away. What I'm going to do is just show you this chart bit here. And this gives you the basic formula for how the pattern works. So you've got five double crochets, chain one, V stitch, chain one, five double crochets in one row. Then next row you do chain five tre uh, trebles together or five double crochets together, chain one treble into the v-stitch like that and that's basically how you repeat it so you have one row where you always put a double crochet or a treble crochet into the v-stitch and on a treble single treble you do an increase of five trebles together or double crochets if you're in US terms um, and you put the v-stitch on top of a five treble together so I hope that makes sense so you have, it's basically a full root row repeat. So you'd have a repeat of five trebles in one stitch, chain one, V stitch, chain one, five trebles, and you go along the row like that. The next row would be five trebles together, um, chains, a treble crochet into the V stitch, five trebles into the, um, the, the tre five trebles together goes into the, five stitches below which is the five in one stitch below and then the next row you would do a v stitch into the uh, where you've uh, treble five together and you put five five double crochets or trebles into the uh, treble crochet below and then v stitch into the treble five and then next row you do five trebles into the previous treble v stitch into the five trebles together um, five trebles into the treble below and when I'm saying trebles I'm talking UK terms or double crochets if you're in US terms I'm a little bit bilingual I can do both I prefer US terminology because um, it makes more sense to me and that's basically what you do you do that full row repeat it is actually quite simple I've made it sound really complicated it's not as complicated as it sounds 
So if I can sort of, it's, trouble is with being white, it's very difficult to show. So you've got five trebles together there, uh, five trebles into one stitch there, and then the row above you do five trebles together. Or these are double crochets if you're in the US. And then when you've got a V stitch in between your five into one stitch, you then do a treble there. That makes sense. And that's basically what you do, you just repeat it over and over and over again. Uh, so I hope I've explained that okay. Um, it's probably a little bit confusing. Um, it's, I'm not very good at explaining these things. And of course, because it's pattern, I can't give too much away. But that's basically what the um, repeating pattern is. I've probably said more than I should, but um, it's the only way I can do it. I can't find the pattern anywhere else. So just to give you some inspiration. And then the border is basically just a single crochet. That's US terms or double crochet in the UK. Um, four times all the way round. Um, on the border, basically, I've done um, a single crochet into each actual bit there, and then a single crochet in in the chains. So it's like every other stitch is either in a stitch or in a chain, and I've done that all the way down. Um, and I've done that both sides and it's come out reasonably straight and like I said it main reason it needed blocking was for the top and the bottom because I struggled uh, with the top the only problem with the top was um, because it finishes on a fan or five treble five double crochets into one stitch it left it um, a bit higgledy piggledy if you just did it so where I got a valley which so like in a bit here had a valley. I actually put um, half trebles or half doubles, depending whether you've got UK or US terminology, in where the valleys were to try and make it more straight, and that did work. Um, and I've got a fairly straight uh, border. And then I single crocheted the rest of the rows all the way around. Um, and I did four rows of single crochet basically. Um, so that's the border. So um, that's basically it. Um, I'm sorry for having explained that very well, but I'm just hoping that it will give you some inspiration. Just something that looks a little bit different. I get a bit bored with the same type of baby blankets over and over and over again. And um, I just liked that it looked a little bit different. I think it's actually come out a lot quite pretty, actually. Now, I will confess there are one or two mistakes in here. But that does make it a unique blanket. Um, when I make a mistake, if it's one that I can rectify on the next round, I try and keep going rather than frogging back simply because um, I've had huge issues with per perfectionism um, in the past um, and it made me very unwell. Um, if you're new to the channel I suffer with depression and anxiety. It's under control um, but a few years ago I was very 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 ill. Um, I couldn't function at all um, and part of my problem was perfectionism. So if I do make a mistake, I try and challenge that these days and try to basically keep going and then just rectify the mistake in the next row. It's a bit kind of like life, isn't it? You make a mistake, you can't always change it, but you can always rectify it the next time the opportunity comes up, the same situation comes up. So, you know, you can try and make things, deal with things better the next time. So that's kind of why I do that. It's um, basically a way of challenging myself and keeping myself well. So like I say, there are a few mistakes in there. I did manage to correct them. Um, and it does mean it's a completely unique piece. And to be honest, if family grieving, they're not going to be looking at every minute um, stitch, I very much doubt. Um, they just want to wrap their child in it. So um, so that's, that's why I've been able to get it done. Um, it took me a couple of weeks to do. I kept picking it up. I did. The only thing I will say this pattern, I did get a little bit bored with it. Um, some patterns when they're repeating, I really enjoy them. You can just sit and watch TV and do them. This one, you do have to concentrate a little bit more. Um, because the rows are very similar when they repeat, but they are different, you do have to concentrate. And when I didn't, that's when I made mistakes. Um, so it is one that you do need to concentrate on a bit more. Um, but that's it for um, today. Um, life update, it's not an awful lot to tell you. Um, sorry there's only a game in one video again this week um, I am hoping to get my schedule back up to two videos a week and um, primary reason has been for the last two weeks we've had scaffolding outside our home and um, they're replacing 
the landlord is replacing uh, fascias and gutters and all the stuff up near the roof. So there's been a lot of banging and clanging and stuff and so there's been a lot of days where I just haven't been able to record because quite frankly you wouldn't have been able to hear me. Um, and one day when they were pulling the fascias off some of the walls were actually moving internally so which was a bit scary. Um, I think from what I've seen they're all finished now so we're just waiting for the scaffolding to come down. Um, the scaffolders are very very loud so I'm kind of glad they're not here today otherwise I wouldn't have been able to record. They bring a massive radio that they blare and they shout. And, um, now, I do swear in private. I'm a little bit of a swearer, I do confess. But there are certain words even I don't like and they were using one particular word that winds me up quite a lot. Um, <coughs> so I was um, getting a bit annoyed with them and they were singing and it was really bad singing as well. So um, Just the scaffolders are so loud compared to... Uh, the people, I mean, the people actually put the asbestos, the, the, the asbestos people were loud because they had to bang, but they were quiet apart from that. And the actual builders that came in were, couldn't, a little bit of hammering and that was it. They were really, really quiet. So um, it's been a bit of a mixed thing of noise this week. So I've never known, and you know what builders like, they don't always come one day and then they come the next and you think, oh, I could have filmed that day. So there's been a bit of that going on as well. So my apologies that um, it's only been one upload this week. I'm hoping early next week that the scaffolding will come down and uh, hopefully it will be stop nicking all my light as well because it's um, made it a little bit darker in here. You can probably see it's a bit shadowy behind me and that's purely because the scaffolding is um, in front of the window and it's affecting the light so but um that's why i'm having to do it in the middle of the day just to make sure there's enough daylight um so yeah uh, apart from that um my back is a lot lot better and um, thank you everyone for your kind wishes and well wishes um i really do appreciate it my back is 98 percent better i'm still getting a little bit twinge i'm still having to be careful um but pain wise i am much much better um, and my heart really does go out to you, those of you that do have permanent uh, back issues. I really don't know how you do it. Um, but I am pleased to report that I am doing a lot, lot better, uh, which is a huge relief because I can function again. So I'm now trying to get back on top of housework because the place looks like a bomb hit it. <laughs> um, but apart from that, all is good. So uh, that's all I have to report this week. Uh, it's been pre pretty quiet apart from that. So um, I hope you're all well where you are. What are you working on? And I uh, hope you're all well and uh, having a good time and enjoying the summer. It's uh, pretty cold here today, but apparently we've got another bit of a heat thing coming over the weekend. So there'll be sunshine back. And yes, I'll be careful and make sure I stay hydrated this time. <laughs> and so that's it. Um, I hope you're all well. Um, wherever you are in the world and that you've got uh, the weather that you wish for <laughs> um, yeah so um, I've got lots of things coming up I have a lamb that I have finished that um, actually I'm going to be keeping for myself um, as it was a kit that was bought for me um, it's absolutely adorable I have shared pictures of it on my social media so if you're you can't wait and want to have a look um, then go and take a look on there um, so that will be next week um, I also have to do the yarn haul from Jan still, um, so I will try and probably do that next week. Um, I'm currently working on a cushion for um, just home decor, so that's going to be something a little bit different um, to the normal stuff that I do, and from there on in I don't know. So I've got a few interesting things coming up. Um, so, until next time, remember to stay well, happy crafting, and remember, until next time, to stay true to yourself. Bye.